As you may have seen, Nintendo released official firmware version 11.14 for the 2DS and 3DS systems. But our friends over at 3ds.hacks.guide have got this covered. And in this video, I'm going to show you all of the steps that it takes to jailbreak your 2DS or 3DS system on official firmware 11.14. And it all starts right now. Hey there, if it's your first time here, my name is Blaine, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. If you'd like original content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Let's get your 2DS or 3DS system jailbroken. I have some important information to share with you about this video before we proceed. First, the link that YouTube originally identified in this published video as being in violation of community guidelines has been removed from the description and removed from the video itself as well. Second, please don't hate on YouTube and don't hate on Nintendo based on the fact that the prior video was removed. I love Nintendo and I've been playing their video games since the first Donkey Kong hit a local ice cream store in Hanahan, South Carolina back in 1981. We all love YouTube or we wouldn't be here together and we all love Nintendo or we wouldn't be here watching a video about Nintendo. So please keep any comments about the process itself positive in nature just like everything else we do on the channel. And finally, about that missing piece of the guide, that link that's no longer in the description or the video, if you want to find out during the video itself what you're supposed to do, my recommendation would be simply read the 3ds.hacks.guide in its entirety. I'm sure you'll be able to figure out what to do with that information at that point. And at that specific location in the video, there's just a marker that says this content has been removed in compliance with YouTube community guidelines. Just read the guide in its entirety and make your own educated decisions about what you want to do with your handheld system and your information. All right, that's everything. Let's move forward. This new guide is based around the latest version of the official firmware for the 2DS and 3DS, version 11.14. Make sure your system's up to date before you use this guide. A jailbroken device can get you banned from online play with Nintendo. Make sure to protect your account if you plan on jailbreaking your device. Special thanks to the folks over at Hacks.Guide and 3DS.Hacks.Guide for their incredible work. I've donated to them several times and hope you'll consider doing the same. I'll do what I can to help you, and there are some great folks here in the community and the channel that can offer advice. If you get stuck, 3ds.hacks.guide has an incredible Discord. I'm using a new Nintendo 3DS XL for this example, and I'm using the micro SD card that's in that system. Power off your system and take your micro SD or SD card out and put it into your computer. In Windows, go to File Explorer. You'll need to access that SD card, and in this case I've named the SD card Subscribe to make it easy for you to remember to subscribe to the channel while you're here. On that card, you should see a Nintendo 3DS folder and nothing else. Double click on the Nintendo 3DS folder. The very first folder you see in there is what's called the ID0 folder or ID0 number. Select this alphanumeric character set and copy it. You'll need to paste it in just a minute into a website and there's definitely no reason to take this entire alphanumeric character string and try to type it in manually. That's all you need to do with your PC at this point. Take the micro SD card out, put it back into your 2DS or 3DS and power the system on. You'll need to access your friend code in order to proceed forward through the process. From your 2DS or 3DS main menu, scroll up until you get to the friends icon and select it. On the friends menu, scroll over at the bottom screen until you see your me character and then look up at the top screen. Underneath your me character, my disembodied dancing head here for example, you'll see your 12 digit friend code. Make sure to document this information as you're going to need it in the next step. While you're in your web browser, go ahead and download Luma 3DS from the GitHub. You'll need this software in order to install custom firmware on your device. Scroll down until you get to the asset section and then click on the zip file to download Luma 3DS. That movable.sed file needs to be uploaded to the BB3 archive website in order to create a file that you can put on the micro SD card and actually run an exploit. Click on choose file and then double click on the movable.sed file that you just created. Then click on download BB3 archive to get the file that you're going to need. 
Power off your handheld system and put the micro SD card back in your PC. The two files you just downloaded are both compressed folders, so you'll need to uncompress them. Go to your downloads folder and uncompress both of these files. There are specific files inside these folders that you'll need to access. And I recommend when you uncompress a compressed folder, go ahead and delete the compressed folder to eliminate confusion. Otherwise what happens is when you go to look for the content inside these folders, you may end up trying to click into the compressed folders instead of the uncompressed ones, and that can create challenges with transferring files around. Double click into the Luma 3DS folder. There are two files here you're going to need. The first one is called boot.3dsx, and the second one is called boot.firm. Select both of these files at the same time and copy them. Go over to your micro SD card name subscribe and then paste both of these files right on the root of the SD card. Navigate back to your Downloads folder. Go into the BB3 folder again, and you'll see a file called usm.bin. Copy that file, go back to your micro SD card, and then paste that file on the root of the SD card. Back in the Downloads folder, go back again into the BB3 folder. Inside that folder, you'll see a file called foodfor3ds.bin. Copy that file. Then go back to the micro SD card. Navigate into the folder that says Nintendo 3DS. That's the same folder that has the ID0 number, which is this number right here. Remember you copied this earlier? This time go into that folder you'll see another set of 32 characters alphanumeric here and it's called wait for it id1 go into that folder and you'll see nintendo dsi where go into that folder inside this folder is where you paste food for 3ds dot bin that's everything you have to shuffle around for now eject your micro sd card put it back in your 2ds or 3ds and power your system on back at your system main menu Go to Settings and launch it. In the bottom left corner of the touchscreen, tap on Data Management. From here, tap on DSiWare in the top right corner of the bottom touchscreen. Then tap on SD Card in the top right corner of the touchscreen. And the entire bottom touchscreen should turn red. If you see this, everything's worked correctly. If you don't, make sure that you put all of the files in the right folders on the micro SD card on your PC and try again. Your system will reboot back to the home menu. From here, just power it completely off. This time before you power it back on, press and hold the following. The left shoulder button, the right shoulder button, the D-pad up, and the A button all together, and while holding them, then press the power button. What this does is it launches your 2DS or 3DS console into safe mode. I know the folders before it said un, but this is actually the console's safe mode. From here, tap on OK to continue. And when you're prompted, tap on I accept to accept the terms and conditions. The thing is, this is actually not going to do an update. It's actually going to fail to do an update, and that is exactly what it's intended to do. This is intended behavior. Tap on OK to accept the message about being plugged into the power supply, and then continue. It's going to attempt to do an update, and it will fail the update, and when it does, you'll get the following error message, 003-1099. Again, this is perfectly normal. Just continue on through the process. Tap on OK on the bottom touchscreen to continue. When you're prompted whether or not you want to configure your internet settings at this point, tap on Yes to continue. In the following menus, Navigate first to Connection 1, then to Change Settings, then Next Page, which is the right arrow, then Proxy Settings, then Detailed Setup. Once this is done, you should see your bottom screen turn red, and the top screen should say B9S Install Success. Press any key to reboot. So press any button on your 2DS or 3DS to reboot your system. When your system reboots, you should be at the Luma 3DS configuration menu. Use the D-pad to scroll down with the red highlighter 
until you get to the option that says show NAND or user string in system settings. Then press the A button to put an X mark next to it to select it. Once it's selected, press the start button to restart your system and it should boot back up to the home menu. We exploited the Wi-Fi settings to start the jailbreak process, so we need to set your Wi-Fi settings back like they were. Go back to System Settings, and inside System Settings, go to Data Management in the bottom left corner. Then select DSiWare at the top right corner, and tap on SD in the top right corner once again. This time, instead of a red screen, you'll see a green screen in the bottom corner. That means your Wi-Fi settings have been restored on your 2DS or 3DS. Then it should reboot back to the home screen. Excellent. Go ahead and power off your system and put your micro SD card or SD card back into your PC. If you're getting value from this guide, please remember to subscribe while you're here. Not only does it really help out the channel tremendously to make it possible to make more content like this, you'll get great original video game content as it's posted to the channel. Let's keep rolling. With your SD card reinserted into your PC, go ahead and open it up and go to that card. From the root of the card, click on the Nintendo 3DS folder. It may have moved based on whether or not you alphabetize your folders and files. Then go into that ID0 number, that 32 digit alphanumeric character folder, and then the ID1 folder that follows it. From here, go into that DSiWare folder and then delete Food for 3DS from inside this folder as you won't need it any longer. You'll probably get a confirmation message about deleting it since it's on removable media. Confirm that you want to delete it because you don't need it there any longer. Ready to do some downloading? There are some key components of this jailbreak process that you want to add in, especially to add value to this jailbreak experience once you've got it done. Anemone is one of them. It lets you customize themes on your 2DS or 3DS. Scroll down and grab the CIA file for Anemone off the GitHub. It's linked in the description. Checkpoint lets you manage save games from your cartridges and games that you've installed on your SD card. It's on the GitHub. It's linked in the description. Grab the checkpoint.cia file. You'll need the latest version of Homebrew Launcher. It's on the GitHub and it's linked in the description below. Go down to Assets and grab the CIA file. God Mode 9 is at the core of the components you're going to need in order to customize your 3DS. Go down to Assets and grab the zip file from the Assets section. DSP1 makes it possible for your jailbroken 3DS or 2DS to play sound through your homebrew applications. Grab the CIA file from the Assets section. FBI makes it possible to install CIA files or program files on your 2DS or 3DS. In the Assets section, you'll need FBI.3DSX and FBI.CIA. CTR No Time Offset essentially just makes sure that the clock on your jailbreak and the clock on your system are synchronized. Scroll down and get CTR No Time Offset.3DSX. Luma Updater makes it possible to update your Luma's installation without having to go back to your PC and constantly reinstall it. Go down and grab the CIA file for Luma Updater from the Assets section. In a manner of speaking, the win in this section is all about getting the files moved to the right folders on the SD card. Start by creating a new folder right on the root of the SD card and call it 3DS. Also on the root of the SD card, create a new folder and name it CIAS. Now navigate to the Luma folder at the root of the micro SD card and create a new folder and name this folder Payloads, P-A-Y-L-O-A-D-S. Now head back over to your Downloads folder. From here, the easiest way to manage this process moving forward is to reorganize your files and folders by type. A lot of these things go into the same folders on the micro SD card, so this makes it easy to manage. In fact, go ahead and grab both of the 3DSX extension files and copy them. Then go over to your micro SD card, go into 3DS, 
and just paste them right here. Cool, now go back to the downloads folder. All of these CIA files are going to live in the CIA folder on your micro SD card. So grab all of them at one time, all of the CIA extension files, and copy them. And then go back to the SD card, go into the CIAS folder, and paste them all right here. This bulk process of moving things is going to make your life much easier. Go back to downloads. You'll need to extract the contents of the God Mode 9 zip folder, so go ahead and do that now. Once you've extracted God Mode 9, there are going to be two things that we'll need to move, and we'll take a look at them in just a moment here. One of them is going to be a file, and the other is going to be a folder. Excellent. And remember to delete the compressed volumes in order to eliminate confusion moving forward. Cool. Now go ahead and head into the God Mode 9 folder that you just uncompressed. Copy the godmode9.firm file, go back over to your memory card, then go into the Luma folder and the payloads folder you created and paste it right here. Back in the downloads folder, go back into the godmode9 folder, grab the gm9 folder and copy it. Then go back to your SD card and just paste this one right on the root of the SD card. And that's it, all the files are copied. Not too bad, huh? Now just remove your micro SD card and put it back in your 3DS or 2DS and power it back on. First order of business is to check for any system updates that are still pending. If you're doing the guide, you should already be on version 11.14, but the 3ds.hacks.guide calls for this step and I do not dispute the wisdom of the oracles. Go ahead and run the system update process by going to settings, then tap on other settings, then scroll all the way over to the right until you get to system update and select it. My guess is if you know how to do these jailbreak processes up to this point, you're very comfortable with doing a system update. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward to the next step. Back at the home menu, scroll over until you get to the download play store and then select it to launch it. Once you're inside the download store, Press the following key combination, left shoulder plus D-pad down plus the select button. This will launch the Rosalina menu. From here, come down to select miscellaneous options, then select switch the hb.title to the current app, then confirm it with the A button. You'll get a confirmation message that says operation succeeded. Press the B button to continue, and then press B to return back to the Rosalina main menu. Then press B one more time to exit the Rosalina menu. From here, press the home button to go back to the main menu. This is an important step, so make sure you pay close attention here. You need to close download play in the bottom left corner of the touchscreen because you're going to relaunch it, but it has to be completely closed down first and then relaunched. Now that you've closed it, go right back into Download Play. But this time, instead of Download Play, you'll get the Homebrew Launcher. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go ahead and start launching things from the Homebrew Launcher to get you up and running on the jailbreak. The first piece of Homebrew software you'll need to launch is CTR No Time Offset. Once it loads up, the only thing you really need to do with this is just press the A button. It'll synchronize the times as it needs to, and then once that's done, just press the Start button to go right back to the main menu of the Homebrew Launcher. Back at the main menu, launch FBI. This is the program that makes it possible to install the CIA files, those files that are going to let you run these other programs and other Homebrew programs that you're interested in. Most everything in FBI is focused around the bottom screen. Take a closer look. Use the D-pad to scroll down and select SD from the menu choices and select it with the A button. From here, scroll down to the folder named CIAS, CIAs, and select it with the A button. You'll see a listing here for what's called current directory. Select it with the A button. Then you'll be given some install options. From here, scroll down to the one that says install and delete all CIAs. To confirm this, either press the A button or tap yes on the screen. This installs all of those programs and will put them on your home menu 
and then deletes the CIA installer files to save space. Once they're done installing, either tap OK or press the A button to continue. Press the Home button to go back to the main menu. You'll get messages in the bottom touchscreen that new software is available. To skip these messages, just tap on the OK button at the bottom of the touchscreen to continue. And when you get back to the Home menu, you're going to see some presents, and I love presents. Let's go through and sort these out one at a time. In the bottom left corner of the touchscreen, tap on Close to close the suspended application. The first thing you'll need to run is called DSP. It's a thing that lets you run sound on your homebrew programs. Scroll over until you get the DSP present, press A button to open it, and then press A again to launch DSP. Once DSP comes up, it has a quick self-install process to run. Once that's done, press the B button to self-delete the app and then it will return itself back to the home menu, having done its job correctly. At this point, power off your system. To launch God Mode 9, hold the Start button and then press the Power button to turn on your system. You'll see the God Mode 9 menus pop up on top and bottom screens. Okay, here's the deal. They look pretty good because of the quality of the camera I'm using here, but these are very, very dim on screen. So if you need your reading glasses, now's the time to go get them. If you're asked to create an Essential Files backup, press A to do so. And if you're asked to set the date and time of the real-time clock, press A to set it, set the time and date, and then press A to confirm. Press the Home button to bring up the action menu in the bottom screen. In the bottom screen, scroll down until you get to Scripts and select it with the A button. It will land right on GM9 Mega Scripts, select it with the A button. Scroll down to Scripts from Playlix Guide and select it with the A button. Select Setup Luma 3DS to CTR NAND with the A button. This will tell you what it's copying over. Press the A button for yes to confirm. Once you've confirmed you want to write, you'll need to unlock the system NAND in order to do this. Press the A button to confirm that you want to unlock to be able to write to your system storage. Enter the pattern on the controls that you see on screen here to activate the write process. Write, down, up, right, and the A button. You should see this confirmation message that Luma 3D has copied successfully. Press the A button to continue. This will take you back one level in the menu to where you were previously. Next, you want to clean up your SD card. Scroll down one listing in the menu to clean up SD card, and then select it with the A button to continue. You'll be asked to confirm, press the A button, and then you'll get a message that your SD card is squeaky clean. Press A to continue and go back one level in the menu. Select Backup Options with the A button from the menu. You want to do the Sys NAND backup, so select that with the A button. You'll be asked to confirm if you want to do a system backup to your SD card, press the A button for yes to confirm. Now hurry up and wait, because this takes a little bit of time, somewhere around seven to eight minutes or so on average. But no sense watching that paint dry, let's skip ahead. Okay, once it's done with that process, you'll get a confirmation message that everything went okay, press the A button to continue. Now press B to go back and keep going back until you get to this main menu and go all the way down to exit and select it with the A button. You'll be asked to confirm that you want to lock those write permissions and you most certainly do. Press the A button for yes to confirm locking your sysnand. Back at the GM9 main menu, let's focus our attention back onto the top screen because there's some different settings that you have to work with here. In the top screen, scroll down until you get to the setting that says Memory Virtual. It's the one that has the M next to it. Scroll down to Memory Virtual and select it with the A button. From within Memory Virtual, scroll down until you get to boot9.bin. Boot9.bin and select it with the A button. Then focus your attention back down to the bottom screen. From here, Scroll down until you get to copy to O slash GM9 slash out. And then select that with the A button. You'll get a confirmation message. Press the A button to continue. 
Now press home to go to the action menu and then select power off system by selecting it with the A button. Power off your system, take out your memory card and put it back into your computer one last time. Back at your desktop PC, you'll want to back up everything on your memory card. So go to your memory card, conveniently named subscribe, and select everything on the memory card. Then copy everything that you've selected there on the memory card. I would strongly urge you to back this stuff up to your computer and maybe even somewhere else, just to make sure that you've got a quality backup of your jailbreak and the files that you need. Create a new folder on your PC. This is an important step because not only does it back up your SD card, but if you want to upgrade to a larger card down the road, you can just drag and drop the files right onto the new card. Open up the new folder you've created and then paste all of the things that you copied from your original SD card over into this folder on your computer. Once it's done copying over all of your files from the SD card to the computer, there are actually two files on the card itself that you need to go in and delete. Go into the GM9 folder, and then go into the out folder. Inside the out folder, there are two files that have dates. They start with the current date on them. Delete these two files with the date on them as you have already backed them up and you will not need them any longer on your SD card. Go back into your downloads folder. You literally don't need any of this stuff in your downloads folder anymore, and there's no reason to leave your computer cluttered. Go ahead and grab everything that you downloaded as part of this process in the downloads folder, and select it, and go ahead and delete all of it. And remember, it is actually backed up in your recycle bin, just in case you find you need any of it restored. Now put your SD card back into your 2DS or 3DS system and power it back on. It's finally time to go open all of those presents on your 2DS or 3DS home screen. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted to the channel. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. Thanks so much for being here. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.